While we're waiting for folks to get on, I want to remind you our goal today is to provide you with a few updates on some critical topics that I know folks are asking about. As we've done with our previous Facebook Live events, at the end of this update, I'm going to do my best to take some of your questions and provide some answers for you. If you have a question, you can add that in the comments section and we will try to get to it uh, at the end of this broadcast. If we don't get to your question today, you can then submit them via email to info at ltisdschools.org. Also, if you miss any portion of this event, the video will be posted in its entirety right here on our Facebook page and will also be uploaded on our district's YouTube channel, LTISD Schools. Just make sure we've got everybody on. Let me give that just a few minutes. Make sure everybody's here. Can't tell how many we've got lined up today. We're trying something a little new. We're uh, gonna show my screen today if, all, if that is at all successful. And so I'm not able to see my Facebook page where I can kind of monitor how many folks are here, but I've got some folks helping me with that. Give that just a few more minutes for people to sign in. See lots of uh, hearts and likes uh, coming up. Thank you for that. About 371 people, I think, are watching. I feel if I can see that correctly. So I'm going to start off today with some celebrations. We happen to be in the middle of Teacher Appreciation Week, and it's fitting that we begin by recognizing our Teachers of the Year. I'm going to follow that with uh, a recognition of our top 10 scholars of our current high school class, and then they're distinguished educators. I'll tell you a little bit about, about, more about that recognition in just a moment. Now, I'm gonna be calling some names out, so if you'll forgive me if I mispronounce any names, but I'm gonna to attempt to share my screen with you. Let's see if I can do that successfully. Hopefully you can see my PowerPoint slideshow that says Teachers of the Year. And I hope you can see that. Let me see if I can flip back over. I wanna start with Teachers of the Year. There we go, Shannon Aguirre, Lake Travis High School Teacher of the Year. On each slide, we're going to have uh, their yearbook photo for each employee, as well as some screenshots from when we did the virtual announcements for Teachers of the Year. Second, BK Middle School, Jennifer Mons Hagen. Congratulations to Shannon and Jennifer. Hudson Bend Middle School, Megan Gines. The Buccaneers. Lake Travis Middle School, Frank Asorgi. See his screenshot there when we had our Zoom meeting to announce Frank. Rachel Hughes, B Cave Elementary School. Congratulations to Rachel. Shannon Norris, Lake Point Elementary School. Beautiful flowers there from Shannon's family. We also sent each of these teachers of the year uh, some flowers the day after these announcements. Adelia again in Lake Travis Elementary School. Maggie Bauer, Lakeway Elementary School. Maggie was surprised there in that picture. Kelly Stewart, Serene Hills Elementary School. Double fist bump there from Ms. Stewart. Bianca Brimer, West Cypress Hills Elementary School. A couple of Bianca's friends and family were sneaking in the door while she was online to surprise her. Those are our teachers of the year. I hope you will join us in congratulating these outstanding employees. We're glad to celebrate them and a great way to celebrate our Teacher Appreciation Week. Now, uh, I wanna tell you a little bit about our top 10 scholars and distinguished educators. We had planned to have our first annual event this spring, uh, a, a, an evening and a banquet called A Night Under the Stars. And this was our first ever attempt to recognize our top 10 scholars, top 10 graduates of the current high school class. And each one of those students was given the opportunity to select an educator that was highly influential to them throughout their career. And so instead, we can't do a banquet. Uh, we were not able to do that now. So I wanna recognize these 10 students 
let you know who they are, and then recognize also the distinguished educator that each student picked as someone who's very special to them uh, during their schooling at Lake Travis ISD. Our valedictorian is Tess Van Dolly, and her distinguished educator is Mr. Adam Pointer, choir teacher at Lake Travis High School. We have the, the student and the staff members yearbook photos as well as a candid shot when we went out and each student went to the classroom of their distinguished educator and uh, we let them know that day. It was a great day uh, for these students and their educators. Did that back in probably February or March. Our salutatorian, number two in the class, Mr. Jason Cox and his distinguished educator, Robert Huffaker. The remainder of our top 10 students, Elizabeth Daves and her distinguished educator, Minya Lopez Mingela. Jackson Freilich and his distinguished educator, Shannon Aguirre, also High School Teacher of the Year. Ethan Martin and his distinguished educator, Mr. Aaron Wiedemeyer. Maya Obergon and her distinguished educator, Elizabeth Stearns, librarian at Lake Travis High School. Tree Wynn and his distinguished educator, Laurie Risters. Mr. Butler and I cleverly posed under each of our respective alma mater flags there. Benjamin Wong and his distinguished educator, Mark Craig. Kevin Wong and his distinguished educator, Lakeway Elementary School teacher, Tom Seabolt. Mr. Seabolt gets the Cool Pose Award for both of his photos. Very surprised when a, a group of high school students came to surprise Mr. Seabolt, including Mr. Wong uh, at his campus that day. Annabelle Toe and her distinguished educator, Anna Macias. We also were able to, in lieu of a banquet, we had uh, food delivered to each of our top 10 students as well as their distinguished educators. Mr. Butler and I had the honor of delivering food to our valedictorian and salutatorian and their distinguished educators. Uh, we want to thank our partner at Texas Regional Bank for providing uh, those meals for us. And uh, we practiced social distancing that day, but all of those students and those distinguished educators received a meal uh, from Craigos, courtesy of Texas Regional Bank. Uh, the bank paid for those meals from Crago, as well as cookies from Runaway Luna, a bakery in town. We're very grateful for our partners for helping making this happen. It was an in-person banquet but we hope it was a, a close second. Congratulations to these students and their distinguished educators. We are extremely proud of your academic success. We look forward next year to having a banquet in your honor uh, and doing that right. But for today, uh, this will have to do, and we wanna recognize these students and their the educators they, they selected. The next thing I wanna do before I stop sharing my screen is to tell you a little bit about the recent thought exchange we shared uh, and as you participated in it, I want to give you a little bit of detail about that and walk you through some of our top thoughts. The, the question we asked it was, as we manage the impact of COVID-19, what are the most important things that our district should consider to best support our families as we conclude this school year? We had that posted for about a week and we had a very healthy 1,623 participants. Of those participants, 1,327 different thoughts were shared and our participants rated those different thoughts a total of 65,236 times. A breakdown of those participants was as follows. We have 77% of our participants, about 1,150 people were parents and guardians. 19% of the participants were staff a handful of students participated, a small number of community members and other. So very, very good participation. Thank you for doing that for us. And let me tell you then a little bit about some of the feedback. This is a, a word cloud that shows you uh, what were some of the major topics that were submitted. And the larger words were the more common topics, meaning student safety, 
things related to staffs, uh, good job, mental health, health, uh, continue, communication, those things were most important uh, to our parents. Let me give you a little bit of detail about some of the top thoughts. These aren't in any particular order. I picked uh, some of the thoughts from our top 20 of the most highly ranked thoughts, uh, and they are as follows. That's the repeat of the question. And uh, of the top 20, we had a number of thoughts, five or six, that were related to health and safety. And these are three of those thoughts that I share with you today, the health and safety of our students and staff, safety of students and all LTISD workers. Safety is the most important thing and comes before anything else. We don't need COVID-19 to get worse or continue. Another one of our top thoughts, we would like you to communicate often over the summer as plans take shape. We can't make assumptions about what resuming school looks like. Don't wait until the last minute to make preparations. Okay, fair enough, good advice. Many parents assume the next semester will be business as usual. It very well may not. Begin to gently set expectations. I appreciate that, gently. Be gentle with our parents and community. Set expectations for an unusual fall. Backlash and disruption will be minimized if everyone adopts a flexible mindset. Setting expectations now will give people time to get used to the idea. Another good piece of advice. Using the best information available to make decisions about how and when to resume school operations to protect the safety and students, safety of students, staff, administration, and contract employees. Another top thought, continue as the district has been in providing grace and support to both teachers, staff, and families. So many are going through difficult times. They may be struggling financially, emotionally, with time constraints, working from home, job loss, and even dealing with this pandemic personally. Another top thought, don't be afraid to innovate and plan for online schooling next year. Think outside the box and make online school feel special. We'll likely carry into next year. That is a strong likelihood. Continue to support teachers. Our kids have been so positive. Our teachers have been so positive, and that really means a lot to our kids. The teachers have more pressure, not only academically, but emotionally supporting our kids during this strange time. And finally, a, a significant number of these top 20 thoughts that were ranked by majority of our, our parents and community had some version of thanks or gratitude. And this is just a few of those. Gratitude for our schools. Teachers and administrators are doing a fantastic job. Thanks all teachers, thanks for the big effort. Thanks to everyone. Thank you for all the hard work of the teachers, faculty, district staff. Teachers and administrators are doing a fantastic job. These were all thoughts that all appeared in the top 20. Uh, and that was a healthy participation. We appreciate you for doing that. We're gonna have some detailed reports on this specific thought exchange that will be posted on our website soon. So be on the lookout for that. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now get rid of my PowerPoint slides and uh, pick up where I left off. I wanna tell you a couple of other things about the thought exchange. We had some other thoughts I wanna share with you uh, and, and address those specifically. One of those was, you need to tell us the plans for next year right now. And I wanna tell you that's not gonna be possible. We're gonna tell you as much as I can today. We'll have some more information uh, later in May and June about next year, but it is impossible for us to tell you today exactly what next year will look out look like. Uh, so we're working on that, but uh, don't expect any details. That's part of that managing expectations, I think. So I'm gonna try to do that for you. Another thought was we need to find a way for our students to have closure and say goodbye. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more, more about that later in this live event. Uh, another thought was, is there a plan for kindergarten, fifth grade, eighth grade and 12th graders to come back to school for at least a goodbye or some kind of promotion or graduation event? The answer is no, we are not bringing children back into the school building for social type events. We're not able to do that. We're prevented from doing that by the governor's order. So there, we will not be having in-person events for any grade level. We are attempting to have a graduation event, as you already know, but we'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a moment. Rather than reschedule graduation and have us be disappointed, when that is canceled, come up with a viable plan B we can count on. Seniors deserve more than a virtual ceremony. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about more about that in just a moment. Teachers are spending out of pocket uh, money out of pocket to set up classrooms at home because their supplies are at school. Compensate them for supplies, et cetera. In fact, we've already done that. We have given uh, anybody we have that is, we've asked to specifically have contact with students and work uh, directly and specifically from home. We have given them a $200 stipend 
for our teachers, our principals, and some of our central office staff. So you'll be glad to know that has already occurred. Uh, shutting down the schools is doing more damage than good. We're making these decisions based on fear, not facts. A number of people said they wanted me to open schools today. I um, want you to know that that is not going to happen. Uh, we are required by the order of the governor of Texas to close our schools for the duration of the year. It's not a decision on our part. It's not a local board decision. It's not my decision. We have no choice in that matter. I agree with the order, by the way, but we will not be reopening the schools this year uh, as far as we know today, and we're not making plans to do that. Um, I want to also remind you about our Teacher of the Year information I just posted and our uh, top 10 student videos. Our communications office has posted a video of all of our Teacher of the Year surprise reveals on our YouTube channel. A video of our Night Under the Stars event will be shared and posted early next week. I want to again say thank you to David DiStefano and Texas Regional Bank for covering the cost of our meals and dessert. I want to also thank our friends at Craigos and Runaway Luna for partnering us with us to provide meals for these top 10 scholars and our distinguished educators. It was a great day and we appreciate this folks helping in recognizing uh, our, our staff and students. Now, a couple of other topics I want to cover with you and, and kind of walk you through uh, that I know people are asking about and then we'll get to some questions. A number of folks have asked about how are we going to close out the school year, getting students items from school and returning items that students have at home. And you should have received an email from me yesterday outlining our plans in general and details on picking up students belongings from school and returning district items to our school. Between May 11th and 13th, parent pickup of student items will occur at each elementary school via a drive-through style according to students' last names. Our secondary school students or their parents will be allowed to enter the building in a limited numbers at a time to return items such as calculators, band or orchestra instruments, library books, textbooks, uniforms, as well as to retrieve all personal belongings. We know we have middle school students that have a personal locker, a band locker maybe, and an athletic locker, and there's no way for our staff uh, to gather all of those things. We're going to let folks come into buildings and get those on a very scheduled basis. We also have some procedures in place for athletic and fine arts, including the cleaning, uh, clearing out of lockers and return of equipment, instruments, and uniforms. Your campus principal will provide additional details via email. Please read that email from your campus principal and visit your, that campus website before you come to campus next week. Those details are important. Uh, we want you to make sure you know what you're getting into when you get there and come at the appropriate time. In order to allow our students to remain engaged in online learning throughout the summer, we, the return of our district-based technology devices, including mobile Wi-Fi hotspots and Chromebooks will be arranged at a later date. We want you to understand though, and this is important, the process for student pickup items and returning items is not intended to be a reunion for students and campus staff. You should not approach this event as a time to hug or exchange gifts or in any way uh, come into contact with people. Many teachers will not actually be present at the school because they will be teaching during the day. While you may want to visit with staff and other students during pickup, I ask that you please continue to practice social distancing, proceed through our process with promptness and consideration for the others around you. Follow the directions of the staff on campus and we'll come through this okay. Once again, campus pickup and drop off plans are posted on each corresponding school website. Should you have questions or concerns, please contact your child's school principal directly. Another event I know people are concerned about, we heard on our thought exchange is what kind of uh, end of the year celebrations can we expect, some closure events for our kids. Each of our principals is working right now with our central office administrators to organize a variety of events to provide closure for our students, both electronically and possibly some things in person. Uh, I want you to watch for details from each campus next week, but we're doing our best to provide some on-campus drive-by type events or neighborhood tours, uh, some end of the year celebrations, some of our uh, events that each of our campuses hold. We're trying to do those electronically and provide some, some sense of closure for our students. So be looking out for that. We're wanting to do that as much as you are. And so that information will come next week. Many of you are asking about how do we enroll new students uh, beginning this past Monday? We created a link on our website for enrollment. I want to make sure you understand this is not the process where we ask parents to validate and verify, verify returning student information. That will occur later in July. But if you have a, a student 
a younger student, preschool age child that's enrolling in kindergarten or you're new to our district, you'll see our website. There's a link that takes you through that process electronically. And we'll, if you have questions about that, don't hesitate to reach out to your individual campus. Now I wanna talk about graduation. Our commissioner, Mike Morath, Texas Education Agency Commissioner, updated guidelines on Tuesday. Indoor, in-person graduation events are not allowed at this time. Outdoor graduation ceremonies will be allowed statewide after May 29th or sooner for rural counties with five or fewer confirmed cases. It does not apply to Travis County. Our current plan prior to the commissioner's announcement was to hold a virtual graduation ceremony on May 22nd, the original day of our graduation, and then plan for an in-person event on August 1st at the Cedar Park Center. On Wednesday, yesterday, Mr. Butler, our high school principal, created a survey for senior parents that will conclude tomorrow afternoon, Friday afternoon at five. The survey is asking for parental feedback on the possibility of adding an in-person graduation ceremony with proper guidelines in place for June. If you've not already done so, we hope you will complete that survey. You can expect some additional details based on the survey feedback early next week. We're trying to determine if there's an interest in adding an event in June. We recognize some people are gonna be very uncomfortable with this. We know this is very important to some people. We're trying to just gather some feedback to see what is the opinion of our senior parents. So if you'll complete that survey and help Mr. Butler out, we would appreciate that. We've also had some feedback from some of our students and families that they would prefer to have the August 1st ceremony at Cavalier Stadium instead of uh, Cedar Park Center. Assuming we do not have an event in June, we would have an in-person event on August 1st at Cedar Park Center. We would like to have it at Cavalier Stadium as much as you would, but under the circumstances, if we plan for an August 1st ceremony outside and we had bad weather, people would be extremely disappointed. And so to be most safe, the high school graduation committee opted to try and have that event inside at the Cedar Park Center to remove any further obstacles this event. I wanna remind you that guidelines at that time in August, as well as June, may not allow us to have a gathering of this size. We will communicate with you early next week based on the feedback from the survey, whether we would have an event in June or continue to have the option of August 1st. Stay tuned. More information is coming early next week. I know a number of folks are asking about our summer academic programs, our summer classes, our summer camps, and, and how will those be offered this summer? I can tell you that our academic summer school classes will be offered online this summer in the same fashion that we have offered our online curriculum and teaching uh, since spring break. However, we are going to suspend our 2020 summer camps and summer squires programs through June 30th. We will not be offering any of our regularly scheduled summer camps or summer squires or athletic camps through the month of June. In the meantime, we're going to assess whether or not our district can safely and feasibly offer some level of recreational programming in July. Should you have any questions or concerns regarding summer school, please contact the campus principal, that's the academic summer school program. For questions or concerns about our summer squires or summer camp programs, I encourage you to contact the Lake Travis ISD Office of Community, Community Programs at Stephanie Budai. You should have received an email from me just earlier, moments ago. Uh, look for that email in your inboxes this afternoon, gives you a little bit more detail about summer programs. I wanna say we recognize this is a significant burden to our parents. We just do not believe we can safely provide an indoor environment for young children and provide for their safety under these health conditions. So we're doing our best to see if we can provide some level of limited programming, possibly in July. So stay tuned for that as well. Now, with whatever time we have left, I wanna to try to take some live questions. We have about 700 viewers online. Uh, as, a, as a reminder, I wanna say again that no one knows exactly what we're gonna be doing in August for now. I'm gonna do my best to uh, nod and answer any questions about next year, about when school will start, what our bus service will look like, what extracurricular and athletic events and activities we'll have. We simply do not know that at this time. Um, we have a first question from Amber. Will the playgrounds, tracks, and et cetera remain open through the summer? We have no plans at this time that I know of to close those events. We know those are important to our community. So we're gonna do our best to keep that up. And if we do have to close those, we will let you know. 
but for the moment, we do not have any plans uh, to close those items. If it becomes a problem and we have people congregating in a safe manner, we might do that, but uh, stay posted for that. Veronica asks, if you choose to do a partial summer project or course, what will the hiring process be? I usually do summer squires for supplemental pay, but this year with the cancellation, I will be missing out on a much needed income. Is anyone hiring for the summer? And I would encourage you to check out the community programs website for details later this summer or contact Stephanie Budai, our current our community programs coordinator for more information. We do recognize our staff members and community members do count on this for supplemental income. And we are as sorry as anyone about that, but please check with Stephanie Budai at our a community programs office, she can help you with that. Anna asks, at the end of the year events, will LTISD allow a car parade for our seniors? As I mentioned earlier, each campus is preparing some closure events. And so stay tuned next week. Uh, Mr. Butler will have some details about ways, a variety of ways that we're gonna recognize our students at each campus. Some don't know what today, if that'll be car parades or so forth, but we're working on that. Uh, so stay tuned and more information will come directly from our campus principals. Uh, Jennifer asked, will we allow an end of the year event parade for fifth, fifth grade students? As I said, we're gonna have each campus principal will communicate end of the year closure events for all students, including some of our transition grades. So watch more information on that. Uh, Linda asked, will uh, project graduation be allowed in June if you move the graduation to June? And Linda, I, I gotta tell you, I don't know the answer to that. That uh, project graduation is a PTO event for our high school staff. I would encourage you to reach out to our PTO officers on that one. Uh, I, would, uh, I would assume that would be a possibility, but I just don't know if that's gonna be possible with the event location they had picked out. Uh, I don't know the details about project graduation, but uh, please reach out to our high school PTO. They can help you with that. Uh, Yolanda asks, are there yearbooks? Uh, yes, they are. They're not in yet. Mr. Butler will be communicating with you hopefully tomorrow about a number of topics, including yearbooks. So look for an email communication from him tomorrow. And uh, they're not, I don't think they're here yet, but as soon as they are, they will communicate a way to pick those up. Uh, Stacy also asked about yearbooks and letter jackets. I don't know about letter jackets, but I'm hoping Mr. Butler will address that as well. Uh, Rachel asks, what is your favorite orchid food? <laughs> no, I just, I don't, uh, Rachel, I don't have an orchid food. I, I water them with tap water. Uh, I'm sure there are people who are smarter and better at that, but uh, I don't feed them anything other than water. And uh, I hope that's not a, uh, please don't let the National Orchid Society uh, start sending me hate mail. I, I just feed them tap water. Um, Kelly asks, with summer camps canceled in June, is there a chance that Cavs course will be at least run through July? That may be a possibility, Kelly. We're looking at all options for a number of our camps and uh, athletic camps and summer camps as well. We know for now, we're gonna suspend those through June and we're trying to offer those in July. So look for an announcement later in the next few weeks as we get into June, but we're hoping so, yes. Terry Lofgren asks, what is the drop dead date to decide on the format of the school in the fall, online, in person, et cetera? Uh, Terry, I don't know the answer to that. We, I don't know that anyone can tell you. It's, it's, uh, some of the universities in the state have announced they're gonna have in-person classes and they're gonna have football games even in the fall. I'm not sure how they can know that today. I can tell you today, we're gonna have class as normal and everybody's gonna be in a class and everybody's gonna be in a bus, but I, I don't know that. And so I don't know the drop dead day. As soon as we know that information, we wanna communicate that as soon as possible. At some point, uh, we know that we're gonna ask parents to tell us, uh, are you planning to return your students to school? I will have a couple of announcements about that at the very end of the, of the Facebook Live event in just a moment. Do the summer school, this is from Denise, do summer school classes include ACC courses that occur on the high school campus? Uh, I don't know the answer to that, Denise. If you have a specific question about high school ACC courses and uh, dual credit summer school courses offered this summer, I would encourage you to contact your counselor 
uh, or your assistant principal, they would be able to answer that for you in a better way, but directly email someone, uh, your assistant principal is who I would start with. Is there a possibility, it's from Clarissa, is there a possibility that students will have to make up the STAR test? It's my understanding that they will not. Uh, I, I can't speak for the Texas Education Agency, but my understanding today, Clarissa, is that uh, we are skipping the STAR exam and that is not going to be made up. But uh, how that will be addressed next year, I do not know. Uh, Lee asks, is there an update on the new superintendent hiring timeline? Uh, a topic near and dear to my heart and my wife's, by the way. Uh, we had originally scheduled interviews for the 1st of June. The board was holding those interviews. I mean, sorry, the 1st of April. Those have been postponed, postponed to the first two weeks of June. The original start date for a new superintendent was to have been July 1st. That has now been delayed to August 1st. Uh, the board will have interviews the first two weeks of June. Uh, they expect to tentatively name a loan finalist on about June 15th. Uh, theoretically, uh, the new superintendent would sign a contract with the board and the district on about July 6th with an August start date. So that puts my uh, tenure to be an extra month, which I'm very happy to do. Uh, but that's the plan for today. Uh, Jenny asks a very nice question. I appreciate this. Do you have any recommendations on how to get gifts to our teachers as an end of the year? Thank you. That's a great question. I appreciate that, uh, Jenny. 